Lafayette Jeff 3A Semi State, the Culver Academy's Eagles, and the Newcastle Trojans. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Howard Kelman along with Dave Nicholson, and we look forward to a great day of basketball, and it appears as if in this first game, these teams are evenly matched. You look better with the hat on, Howard. <laughs> They are evenly matched, and what's interesting, you have one from Northern Indiana and in Culver Academies, and you got Newcastle and Central Indiana. Both have really good shooting ball clubs and individual players. It should be a really good matchup here in the second game, or the first game, excuse me, of this semi-state. Okay, and we'll have more pregame info for you. This is the Best Choice Fieldhouse Semi-State on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. Welcome back to game one, Lafayette Jeff Semi-State, Culver Academies and Newcastle. Dave Nicholson, the key players, will start with Culver Academies. Okay, for the 21 and six Eagles, start with number three, Ethan Britton Watts. He's a 6'1 junior, and Ethan averages 14 points of all game for the Eagles. And at forward, number 22, Deontay Craig. He's a 6'4 sophomore, averaging 13 points a game. Keys to the game for Culver. They must take away the threes. Newcastle is very, very good at shooting the three-point shot. Physical screens. They must set solid screens to free up their shooters. And they need to play inside out, meaning get it into the middle to kick it back out for the open shot. Starters for Culver Academies at guard number four, Johnny Cohen, a 5'9 junior. Number three at guard, Ethan Britton Watts, a 6'1 junior. Number 32 at guard, Trey Galloway, a 6'4 sophomore. At forward, number 22, Deontay Craig, a 6'4 sophomore. And at forward, number 23, Amara Curtis, a 6'4 junior. And there on your screen is how they got here in the sectional, New Prairie, and they beat South Bend St. Joe, Mishawaka Mary. That was a close call. You're gonna have a close call someplace in the tournament. They had theirs there 48 to 40. In the regional, they defeated Hammond 72 to 48 and West Lafayette 50 to 43. Now let's take a look at the Newcastle Trojans. They come in here with a fine record of 27 and two. At guard, number three, Luke Bumbalo. He's a six foot junior, 20 points a game for the junior. And at forward, number 32, Mason Gillis, a 6'6 junior. He averaged a team leading 22 points a ball game. Keys to the game for Newcastle, get at least half the rebounds. Transition baskets, I think Newcastle, had, with, along with the three-point shooting, they've got to get some breakaway easy layups. Few fouls on the key players, and that'd be Bomalo and Gillis, don't get them in foul trouble. Starters for Newcastle, at guard number three, Luke Bomalo, a six-foot junior. At guard number 20, Naya Williamson, a 6'2 senior. Number 24 at guard, Nick Greaser, a 6'1 junior. And at forward, number 32, Mason Gillis, a 6'6 junior. And at forward, number 40, Bryce Webb, a 6'3 senior. And the Newcastle Trojans in the sectional, they beat Hamilton Heights 70 to 51, Muncie Burris 77 to 36, and Delta 68 to 45. Not a close call there. In the regional, not so close either. Angola 49 to 35, and a big win for them, Marion in the regional championship 77 to 70. Our officials are Eric Coburn, Craig Bechtel, Steve Morris, and the alternate is Steve Mozingo. And we are ready to begin a very big day of basketball. And Dave, we have seen Newcastle play three games this season. And that combination of Luke Bumbalo and Mason Gillis is one of the best one-two combinations in the entire state of Indiana. And they're both juniors, so they're gonna get better, but you're exactly right. There's two players, you just named them Bumbalo and Gillis, that do a majority of the scoring for Newcastle. They, and the one thing about Newcastle, an excellent shooting basketball team, always have been for some reason. And for Culver, you know what's interesting? Not a senior in the lineup. They're all juniors and sophomores starting. So it's a very, very young ball club for Mark Galloway and Culver. And his son, one of the key players. Trey Galloway, lots of coaches are taking, or excuse me, college coaches are taking a look at Trey he averages 14 points a ball game. He stands 6'4", he is only a sophomore, and he's, he's just a good shooter. 70% from the free throw line and 
36% behind the three-point line. So excellent shooting. Should be uh, an interesting ball game. The scoring's pretty even. Culver averages 62 points a game. Newcastle averages 69. So everything on paper looks like a pretty even matchup. Seven years ago, we had Culver Academies in the semi-state at Huntington North. They won that day. Their last time they've gotten this far, they went to the state championship game and lost. Newcastle has a rich history, too. A great history. But, you know, these guys have got to think. One more win, and I'm playing for a state championship. Two more wins, and I am a state championship. So uh, the farther you go, the muscles get a little tighter, generally speaking. Both coaches have been in tough situations before. Daniel Cox, fifth year there at Newcastle's 179 ball games. Mark Galloway, eight years at Culver Academies, and he's won 106 ball games. And uh, the team that's playing later today, Carmel High School, that used to be where Mark Galloway was the varsity coach. Culver Academies founded in 1894. So we will be ready to go in just a moment. Nia Williamson just introduced for Newcastle. And it's a big, big day of basketball, and this gym is packed. Yeah, it's, I was just going to point that out. Look around. This is great for Indiana High School basketball. Uh, you know there's a sellout at Seymour. There's going to be close to a sellout here this afternoon. So all the sites. Last week uh, at Elkhart, a sellout, I was told, when the academy played up there. But, and uh, we had almost a sellout at Southport. So it's great to see people coming out and supporting Indiana High School basketball. A few years there, there was a little bit of law in attendance. It seems to me that it's growing and coming back strong. The best choice field house game of the week. This is the best choice field house semi-state here at Lafayette. Jeff, game one today, 3A action. And again, our officials are Eric Coburn, Craig Bechtel, and Steve Morris. Steven Mozingo is the alternate. We haven't said much about the officials, but it's a great honor for them to be working at the semi-state level. And I know they're happy to be here. Trey Galloway at 6'4", Mason Gillis at 6'7", will jump center. Newcastle in the home white uniforms. Culver Academies in the maroon uniforms. And Gillis controls the tip. And keep your eyes on this man. Luke Bumbelow, great three-point shooter. And Dave, he's also a terrific passer. He's just a good player. As I said, everybody's looking at him. You don't have to tell, say that he's uh, Mark Calloway, the coach's son. He looks just like him. <laughs> looks just like his father. How about this Culver Academy's defense? Tough man-to-man. -to -man. Almost double. a steal by Cohen. When it goes down inside, they're going to double up. Almost got a steal there, jumping on a double team. Pick and roll. Bumbelow and Gillis, the one-two combination. Gillis is averaging almost 22 points a game. Right at 22 points. The only other, uh, they have two other double figures. Bumalo at just under 20, and uh, Nia Williams at 12. Work it down low to Galloway, and he was in close. He didn't score, and Gillis has the rebound. Had a great look there for Trey Galloway. Here's Bumalo. Opening moment. 3A semi-state, Lafayette Jeff High School, game one. Bumbelow works it left side. I would guess the reason Culver's playing the man-to-man, -man. they don't like the three-point shooting of Newcastle, which is very, very good. So they're trying to keep pressure on the ball, not give them room to shoot. And a timeout was called. Check out Andy Moore, Avon Nissan on US 36. Five minutes from Avon High School. The number one Nissan dealership in the greater Indianapolis area. As for Ben Mendoza, Tim DeMent, Pat Hurst, that crew will take great care of you at Andy Moore, Avon Nissan. And we also want to tell you about the good people at Henry Community Health. They're a sponsor of today's game. Newcastle proud of their basketball team and in Henry County they've been named the top 5% of the nation for outstanding patient experiences for the third year in a row by health grades that's Henry Community Health in Newcastle that timeout neither coach really wanted it but they were going to lose a possession and Culver 
quickly called timeout so they could retain possession of the ball. And Deontay Craig made a terrific defensive play to knock the ball away. Traveling is the call. Traveling is the call. We have played almost a minute and a half, and the Trojans ahead 2-0. Do you expect this to be a high-scoring or low-scoring game? Well, both of them average in the 60s, so I think 60 would be a good number. Off Gillis's hands. Recovered. Nia Williamson down low to Gillis. He's tough inside. He scores. And it's 4-0 Newcastle. Well, you're seeing what happens when Mason Gillis gets that ball down low. No one can stop him. So they're going to have to figure out a way to either double team and deny him the ball because when he receives it low, he's going to score. And that is Johnny Cohen, number four. 22 is Deontay Craig. As Dave mentioned, a very young Culver Academy's team. There's Deontay Craig. Cohen. Galloway. Some good defense by Newcastle. And we've got a leg injury there for uh, Williamson. He's, he's turned his ankle or bumped his knee. He's really limping. Britton Watts missed a three. He's got it again, this time off the dribble, and he hits. Ethan Britton Watts, a 6'1 junior. And the I, first two points of the game for Culver. Yeah, I think the officials probably should stop the ball because, uh, stop the clock, because Williamson can hardly walk. And uh, Coach Cox pointed that out, but so far he's staying out there hobbling around. That's him with the ball right there. Newcastle with a the ball. There's Gillis. He can work inside and outside on the drive. Good, good call. Traveling is the call. Newcastle, Henry County Public Library. Wants to help you live, learn, and grow. Don't miss out on all your library has to offer. Visit nchcpl.org, Newcastle Henry County Public Library. ML Taylor Construction, a proud supporter of Newcastle Athletics, and wish the Trojans the best at the semi-state. That's mlconstruction.com. Got an offensive foul call there on Merrick Curtis hitting a real legal screen. He's a big, strong lad. He's uh, 6'4", but he looks like he goes well on the north side of 200 pound, and he was still moving when he set the screen. Newcastle ahead, four to two. Each team has turned the ball over twice. You expect that in early in a semi-state? You do in the semi-state, and Coach Galloway told me this week one of the things he worried about, his teams were not gonna be physical in setting screens. Well, <laughs> Curtis there said a little bit too aggressive one and got called for a foul. It is Newcastle ball. Nia Williamson with it. Ball knocked out of bounds. 420 left in the first quarter. Nick Reeser inbounding. Culver's defense is looking pretty good except when they let uh, Gillis get the ball down low. That's Bumbalo, Bumbalo, swish. That's the reason you got to guard him tight outside. Bumbalo is really a good shooter from everywhere. He's 46% from the three-point line, and he's taken 158 so far this year. So and not only takes a high volume, he makes a high volume of threes. Cohen for three, no. Bumbalo's also a great passer. Bumbalo's got the rebound, pulling up. And Williamson missing the three. Bumbalo's got it. Nice tip out there by Gillis. He couldn't catch the ball, but he got his hand on it, tipped it back out to Bumbalo. Three and a half to go first quarter. A long three by Bumbalo. Not that time. Rebound. All Culver. Galloway with the board. Cohen back out to Galloway. Nice fake. And he's fouled. Nice shot fake, dribble by Galloway, and then went up and drew the foul. The crowd doesn't agree with it. But a foul's on Greaser. You're going to see a replay here, and you're going to see a nice hesitation, little fake up and in. I thought that was a, a good call. I thought Greaser got his arm. Galloway's a good free throw shooter, 70%. Misses the first one. Neal's custom exterior, which is the Newcastle Trojan basketball team. Good luck at the semi-state. Visit neilscustomexterior.com. Got uh, Galloway with a second attempt. 
Missed them both. And here come the Trojans. Bumbalo, no. Rebound, Galloway. He's really quick with the shot off the dribble. One or two dribbles, and he can get up. Called it, palming the ball Time by out. Galloway. Let's pause for these words on the best choice field house semi-state on the Lassie Broadcasting Network. And there's our score, Newcastle ahead, 7-2, come to Henry County. The Newcastle Henry County Economic Development Corporation invites you to visit growinhenrycounty.com. The team at Purdue Pro Service is cheering on the Newcastle Trojans at the semi-state. Contact Purdue Pro Service to find out how you can get $300 in cash. PurdueProService.com. Dave, your impressions so far? Well, the difference has been in the shooting. Culver's one of six from the two-point range, and whereas Newcastle's shooting 550% on three of six. And three on the three-pointers, Newcastle's made one out of three, and Culver has taken two and not made any. So it's been in the shooting hour. Here is Gillis out to Williamson. Nice pass down low. Underneath, and he didn't score as Bryce Webb was in close. Had a good look. Wasn't able to finish it off the glass. Ethan Britton Watts at center court. Newcastle stand in that man-to-man -man defense. Been pretty effective to this point. 220 left in the quarter. That's Johnny Cohn, a 5'9 junior. Ethan Britton Watts muscling inside. Hittle just didn't go. Hittle muscling inside at six feet eight. Hittle is what gives uh, Culver some semblance of size. He comes, he's only a sophomore as well. But as you said, he stands six foot eight. Mark Galloway has got a lot of young guys out here, and I think maybe the nerves are showing a little bit. Montgomery Steakhouse located in Spiceland off I-70. Montgomery is the premier steakhouse venue. They serve only Angus beef. Montgomery Steakhouse, proud supporter of the Newcastle Trojans. Do you love competition? Well, you love Culver Academy's The Next Launch, the business idea competition sponsored by the Ron Rubin School for the Entrepreneur. Culver's Next Launch coming May 16th. Bomolo, that was a two. He can be explosive. He's got the great shot off the dribble for that medium range jump shot, and he's an excellent three point shooter. He almost banked it home to DeAndre Craig. Interesting, on the other end, we talked about the sophomores. Andy Moore Toyota on US 36, five minutes west of 465. Great deals, new cars, pre-owned vehicles. Jeremy Wilson in the crew. And Andy Moore Toyota. Trey Galloway is one of the better shooters for Culver and the leading, what tied for leading scorer at 14 points. He's 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Very uncustomary. Characteristic of him. And there he scores. That will get him going. You know, he, that's his first basket, first points. That should get him going. And Culver Academy's first points, three and a half minutes. A steal. Britton Webb. And Ethan Britton Watts scores. Watts, excuse me. I said Webb. We've seen it many times when a team is not doing very well. All of a sudden, if they get a couple of baskets, their energy comes up, their defense picks up. And Mason Gillis scores. He's three of three from the field. It's a, about a 10-foot jumper there on the baseline. He hit two layups earlier. He's a weapon. Britton Watts off the dribble, and he hits again. Thirty-five seconds left in the quarter. Britton Watts, three of four from the field. Here's Bumbleo. Out to Greaser. We talked about the two threats that uh, Newcastle has in Gillis and uh, Bumbleo, and they certainly have done that. They have all the points that's on the board. And they may very well play for the last shot of the quarter. Bumbleo.
He can dish off two. Turned it over. Stepped on the sideline. Referee gave the travel sign, but Mark Galloway, the coach, was giving him the sideline. So one of them got it right, or both of them. Anyway, it goes over with 4.7. It goes over to Culver. Culver on a 6-2 run. Britton Watts for three. No. And that's the end of the first quarter. Newcastle 11. Culver Academies 8. This is the Best Choice Fieldhouse Semi-State on the Lassie Broadcasting Network. And Newcastle leading 11 to 8 at the quarter. Lee's famous recipe chicken located down the street from the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame at 341 Trojan Lane in Newcastle. We're chicken and we're not afraid to say it. Lee's famous recipe chicken. And Parkview Family Dentistry in Newcastle takes care of your entire family. They're accepting new patients. Parkview, Parkview Family Dentistry says, good luck, Trojans. Find them at pfdentistry.com. Culver starts out with the basketball here in the second quarter. And the big difference is Newcastle is shooting it extremely well. Their downfall is they've turned it over six times already. And Nicholas Hiddle hits a three, his sixth three-pointer of the season. Dave, we have our first tie of the game. And Hiddle's 6'8". You don't usually see a 6'8 shooting three. Gillis lost the dribble. However, it was deflected, so it's not over and back. Interesting, they got to 6'4", Galloway guarding Bombalo. They're thinking 6'4 against 6 foot. That gives Galloway an advantage. Stacks Family Restaurant offers a full menu, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Located at 510 South Memorial Drive in Newcastle. That's Stacks Family Restaurant. New player in the ballgame for Newcastle is Blake Burris, number five. Gillis, you can't stop that shot, Dave. No, he's got such good vertical lift, and he gets up quickly, and he's got a very high release. You're exactly right, Howard. Most difficult, unless you've got a bigger player gardening, you're not going to get a hand on the basketball. There's something special when you can shoot quickly off the dribble. Without question. And we talked about Mason Gillis. He's already getting notice and offers from Purdue, Butler, IU, PUI, and Miami of Ohio. So people know he can play. Ethan Britton Watts hits again. And we're tied at 13. He's carrying him a little bit. That's his eighth point out of the 13 for the Eagles. Six and a half to go in the first half. Another new player in the game for Newcastle is Mason Hardwick, number 10 out there. Bumbleau for three. He did it again. Boy, he has a pure shot. <laughs> Luke Bumbleau had hit 72 three-pointers coming into the game this season. An excellent three-point shooter, 72 of 157 coming in, better than 40%. That's Hiddle again, not this time. Good offensive board to Galloway. And a floater along the baseline by Ethan Britton Watts, who's been outstanding. Ten points for him, and we, Gillis is down over there and acts like he's uh, turned an ankle or something. He's limping as he walks over toward the sideline. That would be a real blow to the Trojans. The American Legion Department of Indiana's Boys State provides young men with leadership guidance creating a fictional and functional state government based on Indiana's political process. For more info, go to indianalegion.org. Those good people, John and Tim and Will at the American Legion Department of Indiana. Mason Gillis is staying in the ball game hard, but we talked about he relies on his vertical lift. If that ankle is sore, he may not be able to get the same lift. Seventh Newcastle turnover, Cohen gets it to Britton Watts. Oh, is he on fire? He is on fire, six of nine from the floor. 13 points for Britton Watts. 13 points, seven in the quarter. Here's a foul. Champions begin at the Henry County YMCA registration underway for spring and soccer volleyball. YMCA of Henry County proud to support the Newcastle Trojans. So we have 5.22 left in the half. Newcastle jumped off to an early lead 
inside the lane. Gillis did not hit the short jump. That's the first time he's missed. And he didn't get the lift. And keep an eye on his ankle because he's he's a gamer, but he's still limping. And if you've got a sore ankle, you're just not going to get the push and get that vertical lift that you normally would. Ethan Britton Watts averaging 14 point three per game has been incredible. There he is again. Beautiful pass down low. He picked up an assist that time. And the basket inside by Amari Curtis. Curtis. Culver Academies with seven straight points. Their biggest lead, four. Well, biggest problem for Newcastle have been turnovers. That looks like an offensive foul they didn't call. Bumbleau with a beautiful pass to Nick Greaser. And that cuts the lead to two. Four and a half to go first half. You mentioned it early, Howard, that both teams are getting their legs under them, but Culver really has settled down, playing very solid right now in the last three or four minutes. That they have a great job by Ethan Britton Watts and support from his teammates as well. Cold with the ball on the baseline. They pass the ball very well. Nice up and, and under. Beautiful move and the follow. Deontay Craig with a beautiful move to the hoop. And that is his first bucket. He's a 6'4 sophomore. Some tough D here played by Culver. Here's Bumbleo. Ever since Culver started hitting a two or three baskets there early, now they're really getting enthusiastic about their defense and other parts of their game. With some success, they've had confidence. We'll pause for these words. This is the best choice Fieldhouse semi-state on the C Broadcasting Network. It is a four-point lead for Culver Academies on the Indiana Members Credit Union scoreboard. Newcastle Henry County Public Library wants to help you live, learn, and grow. Don't miss out on all your library has to offer. Visit nchcpl.org. ML Taylor Construction, a proud supporter of Newcastle Athletics. They wish the Trojans the best at the semi-state. That's mltaylorconstruction.com. When you talk about famous graduates of Culver Academies, you can start with the late great owner of the New York Yankees, George Steinbrenner, class of 1948. All his children, Al and Hank, Jenny and Jessifer, also Culver Academies graduates. George Steinbrenner did so many wonderful things for so many people, myself included. And I can tell you that Hal, Hank, Jenny and Jessica are wonderful people. Hal's the managing partner of the Yankees now, a 1987 graduate of Culver Academies. Here's a whistle and a foul. Nice split there by uh, Gillis to draw the foul. Went between two defenders, and that's on Craig, Deontay Craig. During that last read, Howard, you mentioned the scoreboard. We're delighted to have our old friend, Indiana Members Credit Union, back with us for this semi state. They've been Ron, a supporter a long time. Ron Collier, Thorpe Miller and company, great to have them aboard. Nia Williamson, who'll be playing football in college. Wabash. They New just announced that the other day. Newcastle's having success in driving the basketball to the paint. Bumbleo particularly, that step back. Not that time. Out of bounds to Newcastle. You watch when they drive, Howard, and they lower that shoulder and they get that's what you know to do, get down low, get one half step past your defender, and you've got to, got to lay up or a jump shot coming, and Bungalow does that very, very well, but the other Newcastle players have been joining in the fun. Bungalow, now here's Gillis working outside. You prefer to see him inside, Dave? The way he's playing today, I would try to get it down low to him because he's got less resistance down there. Culver doesn't have a lot of size. Williamson missed the jumper, and Jordan Freeman who is six feet when soaring for the rebound. Another famous owner, Culver Academy's graduate, Lamar Hunt on the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's been Culver Academy's, it's been co-ed since 1971. Culver's doing a much better job of moving people and moving the ball. That was a great pass. Looks so like they might have got Galloway's arm, but they said, no, it was on the ball. It was just a strip. They'll keep the ball. We're going to have a timeout by Coach Galloway. 
timeout is called. We'll stay here. Come to Henry County. The Newcastle Henry County Economic Development Corporation invites you to visit growinhenry.com. They say good luck to the Trojans. The team at Purdue Pro Service is cheering on the Trojans at the semi-state. Contact Purdue Pro Service to find out how you can get $300 in cash. That's purdueproservice.com. And we'll also tell you, get out to Andy Moore, Avon Nissan on US 36. Five minutes from Avon High School, five minutes west of 465, the number one Nissan dealership in the greater Indianapolis area. Ben Mendoza, Tim Dement, and Pat Hurst and company, the great people at Andy Moore, Avon Nissan. And they're asking uh, Coach Galloway taking the time out to he saw something he didn't like the way they were running his offense. They did a nice job of getting the ball down low to his son, 6'4", Trey Galloway, last time uh, got the ball stripped away, but they retained possession. So it's... Wow, he couldn't get the ball in, five, and almost had a five second, and uh, Britton Watts had to take a timeout, and the coach does not like to see that, using up your timeouts this early in the game. Newcastle, proud of its basketball team and its hospital, the team playing at the A's semi-state tourney, and Henry Community Health in Newcastle named the top 5% of the nation for outstanding patient experiences for the third year in a row. And we will also tell you, we have to talk about the great people at Neal's Custom Exterior. They wish the Trojans the best in this semi-state. Visit NealsCustomExterior.com. Follow them on Facebook. Visit Andy Moore Toyota on US 36 in Avon. Five minutes west of 465. Great savings, pre-owned cars, new cars. Jeremy Wilson and the crew and Andy Moore Toyota. Good luck there in the Newcastle huddle during this timeout. Coach uh, Daniel Cox, he's a hometown boy. He played for Newcastle under Steve Bennett. He was a four-year varsity player there at Newcastle High School. Then he played one year at the University of Indianapolis and finished up at Taylor University for another Hall of Famer, Paul Patterson. He was assistant coach at Anderson University, and as I mentioned earlier, I think I mentioned earlier, he was the assistant at Carmel High School when they won their two state championships in 2010, 2013. So Coach Cox has a real nice resume. And Dave, many of these Newcastle players got some experience at a very young age in the Little League World Series. Oh, that, that was outstanding. Four of these players were on that Little League World Series team, Gillis, Williamson, Burris, and Huntley. And uh, Gillis hit the leadoff home run to get them to the World Series. Always great when you're talking about baseball. There's a pass down low in the basket by Deontay Craig. And Culver Academies has its biggest lead, six points. Here's Bumbleo. Culver Academies on an 11-2 run. The long jump did not go by Nia Williamson. Here's Galloway. Nice pass down court by Galloway. Britton Watts, no. Terrific offensive board. I mean, Jordan Freeman is six feet, and he was up there with the big guys. He was well above the rim, Freeman. That's, uh, we know about the vertical lift of Gillis for Newcastle. Freeman went as high as anybody has today to get his hands on that ball. Stacks Family Restaurant offers a full menu, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 510 South Memorial Drive in Newcastle. For great food, stop in at Stacks Family Restaurant. The way they're lining up, uh, Culver may be coming a little bit of pressure here. They're meeting them at the 10 second line, and you would expect maybe a run and jump double team. A minute and a half there it left. is right there. Yep, well called Dave. Dave Nicholson in the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Inducted in 1999 for his coaching efforts, primarily at Noblesville High School. Head coach there for 16 years. And Williamson going to the hoop. And the ball knocked away in a whistle. And Indiana's basketball encyclopedia, Hoosier Basketball Magazine, your source for all high school, college, and pro basketball in Indiana. That's Hoosier Basketball Magazine. That foul was on Jordan Freeman, his first. Newcastle's having a lot of success driving the ball and particularly drawing fouls. Gillis, he forced that shot. It got, the uh, defender got a hand on it, kind of missed that shot up. 
He made his first four field goal attempts, has missed his last two. Are you surprised at the score, Dave? Uh, I am. The way Cal uh, Culver started, it looked like Newcastle was going to create quite a gap. But since they've settled down after the first three or four minutes, I'd have to say that Culver Academy has outplayed the Newcastle Trojans, and a lot of it has been the defense. And as a result of that good defense, Newcastle has turned it over numerous times. Well, Galloway going to the free throw line, drawing a foul. I think Culver Academy has been outstanding since, as you mentioned, that early good start. He's zero for four. He needs to make these. And he's got it. Trey Galloway, 70% free throw shooter. The American Legion Department of Indiana's oratorical contest scholarship teaches leadership qualities, the nation's laws, the ability to think and speak clearly. For more info, go to indianalegion.org. Hits them both. This team's got an eight-point lead. This is the biggest lead of the game. We knew how good Newcastle was. We've seen them three times. We had not seen Culver, and they have played outstanding basketball. Newcastle had an early seven-point lead, and since then, Culver Academies has outscored Newcastle 24-9, to and Bumbleau is fouled. Coach Galloway did not want that to occur because Bungalow was on the Bronco there in the center circle. You don't want to foul someone that far back, particularly when he is a 76% free throw shooter. Good look at Bungalow there on the screen. He's getting a lot of looks for colleges, and I think he'll get a lot more next year as a senior. IU Purdue at Fort Wayne, Indiana Westland, University of Indianapolis. Those are all fine schools, but I've got a plenty of that someone in a little bigger college may take a look at Bumalo next year. I think you're right. Also a fine wide receiver on the football team. He has nine points. 76% free throw shooter this season. You can look at a shooter, boy. You see the form and everything. Follow through. Good rotation on the basketball. You can see why he shoots a high percentage. Trey Galloway moves it across. Let's see if they play for the last shot of the half. You would think so. Unless they get a wide open layup, they definitely are going to shoot the ball out. Got to make your move now Galloway's down to five go. seconds. Get a screen for him. Two seconds. That'll count if it goes. No, it's off target. Good defense there by Newcastle. That's the end of a great first half for Culver Academies. Culver Academies 26, Newcastle 20 on the best choice Fieldhouse semi-state on the Lassie Broadcasting Network. This first half, a great one for Culver Academies, Purdue University is providing higher education at the highest proven value. Learn why at purdue.edu. There's your halftime score on the Indiana Members Credit Union scoreboard. Culver Academies 26 and Newcastle 20. Newcastle led 11 to 8 at the quarter, a great second period by Culver's Academies. And we mentioned a couple of times how the bugaboo for Newcastle has been their turnovers. They've turned it over seven times here in the first half and Culver has only turned it over twice. Field goal percentage, Newcastle has a higher percentage of 47% in the first half to 44% for Culver. So Newcastle's shooting the ball well. They need to get a shot each time they have a possession. And of course, the people we thought would score for Newcastle, all but two points have been scored by Bumalo and Gillis. On the other side, a guy that has really stepped up this afternoon, Ethan Britton Watts, has 13 points already. Nobody else more than four points for the Eagles. So shooting, I think, is good. Uh, I would expect Newcastle to come out. I, I like the way they're driving the basketball and getting to the free throw line. You may see more of that because Culver is playing them so tight outside defensively, they're not getting the open look. Well, Newcastle jumped off to an early 9-2 lead. We didn't know what was going to happen. And the guy who deserves so much credit for Culver Academies is Ethan Britton Watts because when his team was struggling in the early going, he got going and he got them back in and then they just played great collectively. And I think the reason for that, again, is the youth of uh, Culver Academies. 
we mentioned they don't have a senior in the lineup. Those sophomores and juniors had to get the feel of playing in a Sima State game. Whereas Bumalo, he's used to playing with the bright lights on. Gillis is used to playing with the bright lights on for Newcastle, so they came through. But some of the other people are going to have to step up. One young man is may be able to help them here in the third quarter is Williamson. He averages 12 points a game, has not scored any points yet. Purdue University sponsoring our first half and the score 26 to 20 Culver Academies will pause for these words this is the best choice Fieldhouse semi-state on the Lassie Broadcasting Network and there's your halftime score Culver Academies 26 Newcastle 20 and a little bit of an upset I would say at this point a little bit of surprise Let's take a look at some of the first half action. We had some outstanding individual plays. There's a great step in by Ethan Britton Watts. A guy had 13 and a half, anticipated the pass, got a layup. Here he is again hitting the three, a deep three of those 13 points of his. And down inside the muscle play by Deontay Craig. He had four points in the first half for the academies. Down at the other end, good take by Mason Gillis. He had eight points in the first half. And there he is on a little step back, about a 12-foot baseline jump shot. And the guy that always scores, Luke Bomalo, with a deep three. He had 10 points in the first half for the Trojans. There's your percentages at halftime. The field goal shooting, you had the Academy's two of seven on the three-point line. That's not too bad. Newcastle, two of six. A third of theirs went in. Field goals 11 to 25, 44% for the academies, and they really hit well after the first five minutes of the ball game. If you remember, they were way down in shooting in the first quarter. Field goals percentage for Newcastle, 47%. Free throws, not too many take, and the academy only two of six. They're a better shooting team than that. They're 67% on the year. And free throws for Newcastle, two taken and two made by Bungalow. Now, free th the turnovers, there's the big difference, in my opinion, in the ball game. Culver Academy's only turned it over twice. Newcastle has turned it over seven times. Rebounding, the Academy's has doubled up, 16 to eight in the advantage. And the score again, you see Culver Academy's leading the ball game by a score of 26 to 20. And we'll be back in just a moment. We welcome you back to the Lafayette Jeff 3A Semi-State, the Indiana Members Credit Union scoreboard. Culver Academy's leading 26 to 20 at the half. Our production head, Jeff Elliott, director Dave West, executive producer, spotter and statistician Tim Borf. We thank the entire TV40 crew for its efforts, not only today, but throughout the entire season. And that was a very well-played second quarter, a lack of turnovers. Very well played. Only one turnover there in the second quarter. That's by both teams on the one turnover. But Newcastle, I know they trail by six. But when you've got uh, Bumbleo and you have Gillis out there, they can really score in bunches. So expect them to try to make a push early here in the third quarter. All coaches talk about the first three or four minute period of this of the third quarter. You need to get off to a good start. If you're uh, Mark Galloway and Culver, they want to say, hey, we got to push hard build on this six-point lead. Newcastle has attempted six threes. One reason how they've shot six few number, only six, is the defensive cover. We talked early. Good plan there by uh, Mark Galloway of putting extreme pressure on the guys outside. Now, what that has done, it's opened the drives up a little bit. And I mentioned a couple times in the first half. Newcastle drove the ball, got to the foul line a few times, and made a couple of baskets along the way. But they're not giving up the three-pointer. I think that's smart because uh, Coach Cox's Newcastle Trojans, they love to shoot the three, and they're very good at it. They're 40% as a team. So Dave hit it right on the head. You give Culver Academies all the credit in the world defensively. To end the half, Culver went on a 13-4 run. Deontay Craig will inbound as we begin this third quarter. Culver Academies by six. And that is Ethan Britton Watts, number three. I'm coach, uh, sure Coach Cox, Newcastle, 
emphasize, okay, we're gonna button down our defense a little better than what we did in the first half. A nice move to the hoop by Craig, but he didn't score. Here comes Gillis and the Trojans. Craig likes that low post. He made a couple down there in the first half. Well, no foul, no whistle, as Greaser tried to make a fake inside the lane, David, a yeah. jump ball. I Help thought ball. there was a foul before the jump ball, but no call was made there on the baseline. Looked to me like that the uh, Culver Academy player got faked, went up in the air and came down on the Trojans, but uh, they let him play on. Cleaning up a little moisture problem so nobody slips and falls out there. Nick Reeser will be inbounding. This uh, Newcastle Ball Club set some records this year. They had a 22 and two regular season record. That is the most wins ever in a regular season in the school's history. I was a little surprised at that because Newcastle has had some great basketball teams over the years. That they have their 27 and two. Gillis is short with a jumper and Greaser got the rebound. I believe that foul's gonna be on Cohen. If it is on Johnny Cohen, it's three. Three on Johnny Cohen. Opening moment of the third quarter. Johnny Cohen is important to Culver that he, he's only 5'9", uh, but he handles the ball and runs the point guard position very well. Look at that there ball knocked right? away and stolen by Cohen. Eighth Newcastle turnover. Three didn't go. And it's saved. Back out to Britton Watts. And he's got it. He hits it. Tremendous pass there by Galloway. He penetrated. The defense was coming to him thinking he was going to shoot the ball. And he found uh, Britton Watts wide open for the three. Culver Academy's leading by nine, the biggest lead of the game. Bumbalo, and he's got it. Man, that is one tough shot, Dave. He's very, very good. He's, everyone knows that his shooting stroke is pure. Six and a half to go, third quarter. This has been one terrific game. Well played, an offensive foul. Champions begin at the Henry County YMCA. Registration underway for spring soccer and volleyball. The Henry County YMCA is proud to support the Newcastle Trojans. There was some contact there by Curtis, but I tell you, the defender went down very easily. <laughs> Andy Moore Volkswagen. Well, we'll look at a replay here. Okay, let's see if contact. Not a lot. It almost stopped before he got to Gillis. Nice job of going down by Gillis to go, draw the foul. Andy Moore Volkswagen, the newest VW dealership in the greater Indianapolis area on US 36 in Avon, five minutes west of 465. A beautiful dealership. Mike Reed and those people will take great care of you at Andy Moore Volkswagen. Bumbalo. You got to stay in front of Bumbalo and up close to him. Work it down low underneath and the basket by Gillis. Heck of a pass. Gillis had a defender on each side of him and they passed the ball perfectly to get him a layup. Dave, the Trojans are coming back. Five straight points. Lead pass there, doesn't work. Intended for Galloway. Gillis end to end. 20 is Nia Williamson. Gillis posting. We talked about the importance of the first three minutes of the half, and to this point, this first three minutes is belonging to Newcastle. Well, and he drew the foul. Here it is again. Nice move here by Gillis down inside. Off the dribble, pulls it up. And you saw the foul, uh, Williamson. Newcastle Henry County Public Library wants to help you live, learn, and grow. Don't miss out on all your library has to offer. Visit nchcpl.org. The Newcastle Henry County Public Library, ML Taylor Construction, a proud supporter of the Newcastle Athletics, and which is the Trojans the best in this semi-state, mltaylorconstruction.com. Seven straight Newcastle points. Took them out of the locker room and pretty much wiped out that halftime lead. And the crowd is getting into it big time. And we have a ton of Newcastle people here. 
Tim Dorf, our executive producer, says they brought the whole town to Newcastle. Uh, you look at the shades of green, and you're looking at it on all four sides with little bitty sections of other colors, but the green stands for Newcastle. Britton Watts foul, followed his own shot, and first time to the line for him. Foul was on Nick Greaser. I have him for two. Okay, the board says three, so I must have missed one on Nick. Check out Andy Moore, Avon Nissan on US 36. Five minutes from Avon High School. The number one Nissan dealership in the greater Indianapolis area. Ben Mendoza, Tim DeMent, Pat Hurston and that crew will give you a great deal at Andy Moore, Avon Nissan. Newcastle is proud of their basketball team and their hospital. The team playing today's semi-state tourney and Henry Community Health in Newcastle is among the top 5% of the nation for outstanding patient experience. Britton Watts made that second free throw, and he has 17 points in the ball game. That's, that helps stop the bleeding just a little bit because Newcastle is on a roll. That's a tough angle. Nia Williamson did not hit the shot, and Galloway has got the rebound. His seventh fourth. Galloway is a guard, 6'4", but he does a tremendous job. He just knows how to play the game. He's a wing. They call him a guard, but he plays a wing a lot. He goes to the boards, and he has a sense for where that ball's coming off the bank board. We're almost halfway through the quarter, and a terrific defensive play by Gillis, who blocked the shot. And the ball belongs to We're going to see a replay here. It's a nice move down inside by Britton Watts, and... They said it went off of Watts. He tried to get the rebound. Bumbalo from State Road 3. Oh, man. Look at That was a long, long shot that Bumbalo took. Watch this replay. I guess they thought Craig backed under Gillis. Let's see what happens here. You could say who backed under who. <laughs> Gillis was trying to get the offensive board. Could have easily been called over the top. Bumbleau inbounding. Come to Henry County. The Newcastle Henry County Economic Development Corporation invites you to visit growinhenry.com. They wish the Trojans the best of luck. Gillis. It had eyes. It had eyes. He has 14 points. Got the lead down to one, and the crowd has been a big factor since Newcastle started to make their charge back into this ball game. They've really picked this team up. A nine to one run by the Trojans. Galloway all the way, and he took it to the hoop, and he drew a foul. You really like to see that here. The opposition was on a nine to run run and Galloway took it to him. Well, you want to take the ball to the basket, put the pressure on uh, Williamson, picked up the foul, but you want to take the drive, try to get to the free throw line. The team at Purdue Pro Service cheering on the Newcastle Trojans at the semi-state. Contact Purdue Pro Service to find out how you can get $300 in cash. PurdueProService.com Both free throws good. We'll pause for these words on the Best Choice Fieldhouse Semi-State on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. It's a 32-29 lead for Culver Academies, the American Legion Department of Indiana Service Office, trade to provide assistance free of charge to veterans and their families. American Legion of Indiana, we change lives. IndianaLegion.org, Will Henry, John Crosby, Tim Sproles, and that great crew, the American Legion. A special hello to J.R. Gaylor, Executive Director, Associated Builders and Contractors, Associated Builders and Contractors, Merit Shop Construction. One thing that Newcastle's really improved on, Howard, they have only turned the ball over two times here in this third half, or second, third quarter. They turned it over seven times in the first half. Gillis, no. Rebound, Hiddle.
Pure Culver Academy as you move the ball, move people, try to get the ball down inside, get back to the free throw line. Cohen lost it. It's off his hand, out of bounds. Montgomery Steakhouse located in Spiceland, Indiana, off I-70 exit, 123. Montgomery's the premier steakhouse venue. Montgomery Steakhouse, proud supporter of the Newcastle Trojans. Gillis, and he's got it. He has nine in the quarter, 17 in the game, and we're all tied. Well, you would expect uh, Gillis to step up big. It's still he and Bumbleo, the only ones that have scored here in the third quarter for Newcastle. Britton Watts to Galloway, back to Britton Watts. Been a great third quarter for the Trojans, who earlier in this period trailed by nine. They, they were down by six at the half. That one rimmed the basket. Rebound Gillis, all Newcastle. Gillis' is fifth rebound. Bumbleo is fouled. Do you love competition? You love Culver Academy's The Next Launch, the business idea competition sponsored by the Ron Rubin School for the Entrepreneur, features 24 teams vying for $40,000. Culver's Next Launch coming May 16th. Well, Dave, what has turned it around for Newcastle? They're making shots. And the thing I said it a minute ago, that they're not turning the ball over. In the first half, they were shooting pretty well, but they were turning it over far too many times. So they're taking care of value the and valuing the basketball. That's the big difference. And their defense, I don't think uh, Culver's getting this looks they did in the first half. Britton Watts hits a three. He's got it. He had the great second quarter. He's played a heck of a ball game offensively. He's hit his last three from behind the arc. This three would tie it. It is short by Williamson. And it's going to be a foul on Newcastle. Make it, trying to make a play on the ball, but Greaser. That's with 131 one. left in the third quarter. Mason Hardwick back in. He'll replace Nick Greaser. And that is Hardwick number 10, whom you see. And Greaser going to the bench. Hardwick, so 5'10 junior. Played a little bit in the first half. A minute 20 left to go. Third quarter. That's just a one-on-one -on -one move by Galloway to create the contact and draw the foul. He did a nice job. Neal's Custom Exterior, which is the Newcastle Trojans, the best of luck. Neal's Custom Exterior helps you add value to your home. Neal'sCustomExterior.com. A minute 18 left in period three. It is Culver ball. Culver with a three-point lead. Galloway trying to work a pick and roll there. Out to Cohen. Johnny Cohen along the baseline now, shoveling it inside. And it had eyes. Deontay Craig with a short jumper. That I was thought a, Cohen was getting himself in trouble there. I did too, and Deontay Craig really shot the ball quickly. He just kind of caught it and moved. I thought he had hurried the shot, but he made it. We were tied at 32, and since then, Culver Academies has scored five straight points. Still got 35 seconds, but I'm not sure they're going to hold for one, but they might. They might try to lull cover to sleep a little bit and make a quick move. If they do, it'll be uh, Bumalo or uh, Gillis. Pass whipped inside, out of bounds, and was thrown right to Culver Academies. They couldn't hang on. Went through two players' hands there right. for Culver. I thought uh, you, you see the look on uh, Britton Watts' face. He said, I should have had that. You don't expect the other team to throw you the ball, I guess. Right. You're not anticipating that. Nia Williamson inbounding. Back outside to Luke Bumbleo. And we're down to 15 seconds. They're playing for the last shot of the third quarter. And a timeout is called. That was a good move to double team the ball there by Culver. Lee's famous recipe chicken. 
Dave knows all about that. They're good friends of his. Located just down the street from the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame at 341 Trojan Lane in Newcastle. We're chicken, and we're not afraid to say it, Lee's Famous Chicken. Parkview Family Dentistry in Newcastle can take care of all your family, and they're accepting new patients. Parkview Family Dentistry says good luck, Trojans. Interesting the time out there. Uh, Daniel Cox didn't like what his Trojans were doing, and he wanted to get a good luck chance to tie the ball game. Can't do that when it's a five point lead, but they need to score here to get a little bit of momentum because they remember they came out of the locker room in the beginning of the third quarter and really took off. Our good friends at Indiana Members Credit Union sponsoring our scoreboard and five straight Culver Academy's points late here in the third quarter. It has been a well played, exciting game. It's been a good ball game, a close game, which we anticipated at this level when you get to Center State. You're going to have some close game. Now, when uh, Bumbleo touched the ball before that timeout, the Culver Academy's double teamed him. There they go again. They're going to try to make somebody else take the shot. He found the open man, Nia Williamson, for three. And that would have counted by Ethan Britton Watts. That's the end of a very exciting third quarter. Culver Academy's 37. Newcastle 35 on the Best Choice Fieldhouse Semi-State on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. Welcome back to Lafayette Jeff Semi-State Culver Academies by two. And please join us between games for our timeout interview with former Indianapolis Colts linebacker Gary Brackett. Gary will inspire you with his story of building his business, the Stack Pickle. Time out with Gary Brackett following this game. All right, Dave, what do you expect in this fourth quarter? I think it's going to be tied all the way. Both teams have been answering. When one team scores, the other answers. That was a real good play drawn up by Coach Cox in the huddle to get that three-pointer. Galloway hits a three. He's been due. He averages 14. I only have him for two field goals, one two-pointer and that three. He has nine points. Four of those are three throw lines. Playing a very good game. Three didn't go by Williamson. And, and I don't know what the Spurs play is, but Galloway's crew held up Spurs. They're going to run a Spurs play. So Cohen's pass knocked away, but Galloway's got it. Galloway is fouled. Fouled by Mason Hardwick, the 5'10 junior. That's five uh, team fouls on Newcastle and five team fouls on uh, Culver as well. Three men underneath. And somehow Galloway got the ball and scored. Well, he's a good player. He can play inside, outside. You saw him hit the three, and we've seen him post up several times today. Gillis missing a three. And good he can job rebound of also. <laughs> Galloway really taking charge when it matters the mm -hmm. most, grabbing that rebound. He's uh, playing with the determination not to lose this game. Over Academies by seven. Its biggest lead was nine. Here's Cohen. Newcastle's biggest lead, seven, very early in the game. We've had three ties and one lead change. Galloway again is going to go one on one. And he saw no opening. The free man is Britton Watts. No. Out of bounds. They saved it inside. And a foul. It was a nice pass by Cohen underneath to Craig there. Uh, Newcastle dodged a bullet there. Gillis changed, uh, saves this out of bounds play, and he throws it right into Culver. Right there. That comes right back into Culver. And you would think uh, Craig should have been a finishing there, but got fouled. Champions begin at the Henry County YMCA. Registration underway for spring soccer and volleyball. Find out more at henrycountyymca.org. 63% on the season. Craig has seven points. We always talk about the value of free throws, particularly down toward the end of the game and particularly in a tournament game. 
free throws, rebounding, and defense are the three key elements, in my opinion. Craig hits it, a 63% free throw shooter. Well, seven straight points for Culver Academy. He's the lead back up to nine. Got that margin of nine points. Big recovery there by Culver. And Gillis wow. is fouled by Amari Cordes. And I started to say this is a very important possession for Newcastle. Of course, Gillis will be shooting two, and that's a 16 foul on Culver. So the rest of the time that Newcastle gets fouled, they'll be going to the free throw line with the bonus. We'll get one more. ML Taylor Construction, a proud supporter of Newcastle Athletics, and wish the Trojans the best at this semi-state. MLTaylorConstruction.com. As, as Gillis was shooting those free throws, the Culver section over in the corner yells, overrated. I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't think so. He's a terrific player. Cohen passing over to Curtis, Amari Curtis. Out to Galloway, and the academies, the Culver Academy Eagles may be in no hurry right now. Good backdoor nice back cut, beautifully done. And Ethan Britton Watts scores. He has 22 points, Dave Nicholson. They're up by 10. Bumbleo, tough angle. He's got Looked it. Looked good all the way. Timeout call. Timeout call. The lead sliced to seven with Bumbleo's three. Here it is again, Dave. Here's a replay on this. Watch how deep he is. He shoots it with the greatest of ease, and he's four to five feet behind the three line. He's done it all year. Bumbleo, he's a great shooter. And that was a very tough angle also. Newcastle Henry County Public Library wants to help you live, learn, and grow. Don't miss out on all your library has to offer. Visit nchcpl.org and follow them on Twitter and Facebook. Come to Henry County. The Newcastle Henry County Economic Development Corporation invites you to visit growinhenry.com and they wish the Trojans the very best in this semi-state. So we have 5.31 to go. Well, Culver's done a great job of taking care of the basketball for the most part this afternoon. And now that's going to be the key in the next five minutes and 31 seconds. They've got to continue to generate some offense because you can you can see Bumalo can bring a team back anytime and Gillis can come back and and anytime. Outside of Bumalo and Gillis, and Tim Borth can check me on this, I believe only five points have been scored by three pointer by Williamson and a two pointer by Greaser. And so two points, uh, you talk about carrying a team, those two guys have carried the offense for Newcastle. Here's Cohen in traffic. Got to get rid of that ball, and he did. Work it down low, and they may call an offensive foul. They do on Deontay Craig. Offensive foul with 5.03 to go. Going to see the replay. We saw this earlier. It doesn't take much to knock this boy down. <laughs> Uh, you can't fault the defense if the uh, official thinks he's set and there's enough contact to knock him down. I didn't think there was, to be honest, but the official did, and he's got the whistle. With 5.03 left in the game. Here's Bumbleo. You can bet uh, Bumbleo and Gillis are going to be the two that really want the basketball. Well, they're working it back outside. Trying to get it back to one of those two. Williamson. He dribbled that off He his just foot. lost it along the baseline. Mm -hmm. The 10th Newcastle turnover. They've been pretty good in this half, though. They had seven of those, I believe, at halftime. So they've only turned it over three times here in the second half. They've made improvement on it. 440 left in this game. It's been a very well-played game between two excellent teams. And there's a turnover, just as I say that. Bryce Webb in there, number 40 now for Newcastle. Watch Bumbleo off the dribble. New rebound, Britton Watts. He's got a head of steam. There he goes. Gillis. And he got fouled.
There's a replay on this near soon. Gonna see a nice take to the basket by Britton Watts. And uh, Gillis was gonna block it, but body contact clearly a call was right. You might, uh, I don't wanna burden them with this or jinx them with this, but we talk about the youth of Culver and you may see them get a little bit careless with the basketball, a little nerves come in. They haven't been here before. 418 left in this one. The team at Purdue Pro Service cheering on the Newcastle Trojans at this semi-state. Contact Purdue Pro Service. Find out how you can get $300 in cash. PurdueProService.com. Made the second free throw. Tuck the lead back to eight points. And who takes over? Gillis. And he's got it. He's got it, and he's fouled. It counts in a foul for Mason Gillis. Both teams in the one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, this is and one. We're going to see a replay here. Gillis makes a nice move along the right baseline. Not much you can do if you don't let him score. You've got to foul him. And the only thing I would say, if you're going to foul him, take his arms away. Don't let him get the shot up. Gillis is three of four from the line, an excellent free throw shooter, 80%. Good look at the young man Gillis there. He's he's one of the good players right now. He's going to be one of the best in Central Indiana for sure next year. He's got he looked very calm, didn't he? As he got mm -hmm. ready to shoot that free throw. Mm -hmm. Well, they've cut the lead to five. Important move here. They're putting the ball in Galloway's hand. He hasn't run the point today. It's been Cohen. But they want the ball in Galloway's hand right there. They, a lot. He makes good decisions. He makes good moves with the ball. He'll come back and get it back. What about this Newcastle defense, Dave? Uh, they're starting to trap a little bit. You see a double team. They, they're trying to force him to turn it over a little. Work it down low. It's knocked away, but he's got it anyway. And Craig inside didn't score. Webb had knocked it away. That's got to be a foul on Newcastle. He was making a play on the ball, but he went across the, the line. His legs, and that was on Bryce Webb. Pretty easy to see. He's trying to make a play, but uh, you'll see it batted around here, and you'll see cover in front, and it, and there comes uh, Webb in from behind, and it's a bonus. Three thirty-two left in the game. Craig made two uh, big free throws earlier here in the fourth quarter. He's 63%, as I mentioned earlier, but he looked very comfortable up there just a couple of minutes ago. Bryce Webb. Webb commits the personal. Free throws, rebounding, very, very important. Greg is 63% free throws shooter, and he's got it. I'll tell you what, his form looks a lot better than a 63% shooter. Looks very comfortable up there. You watch his arm, his hand rotation, his elbows under the ball. He follows through well. Rotation of the ball is good. All looks good. Looks very confident as well. And he makes them both. We'll pause for these words. This is the best choice Fieldhouse semi-state on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. We welcome you back to the Lafayette Jeff 3A Semi-State. Culver Academy is leading by seven. Henry Community Health Sports Medicine Performance Enhancement is the official sports medicine provider for the Newcastle Trojans basketball team. Congratulations and good luck to the Trojans. Call them for all your sports medicine needs. And our good buddy, A.J. Witham is here. And his motto is... A business with a good sign is a sign of a good business. 332 left to go. And Culver Academy's in control day. Uh, not comfortable though. Seven point margin. Gonna be a lot of free throws shot here in the last 332. Both teams have 18 fouls, so they're only a couple of fouls away from the double bonus. That's gonna be a factor. Bumbleo had the ball go off his leg, but he was fouled right before that. 
He's not a guy you want to foul out that far from the basket. He's an excellent free throw shooter, and I don't understand putting him at the line. He's played well all afternoon, and uh, he, he's just a great shooter. So he's not going to score from where the Bronco is. And you never want to foul when you have the lead. I know the philosophy, of get pressure on him. You got to keep pressure on him so he doesn't hit that three, but you can't put him there because the clock is not running and he's cutting into the margin. 76% for the season. Luke Bumbalo, great player, six foot junior. He has 18 points today, averaging 19.7 per game. Now, do you think Culver Academies will sit on the ball? Then? No. They've got to keep moving it. They don't want to completely hold it. There's a guy they want to handle it a lot in Galloway because he's such a good passer. He sees the whole floor, and if, if somebody's open down along the baseline in uh, Craig or Curtis, he'll get them the ball. As you said, Newcastle trapping defensively. Under three minutes left to go. Back out to Britton Watts. Galloway, Cohen. Interesting, he got the 5-9. Uh, Man, wide uh, open underneath Deontay Craig. Well done. Oh, a huge play. Bumbalo, look at Luke Bumbalo. Back and forth we go. Boy, he'd scare you to death if you were the opposing team or closing defender. What are you going to do? You get up on him and foul him, he hits the free throws. If you step a half inch off of him, he buries a three. And it's one thing to hit a three. It's another thing to hit it from a tough angle, which he does time and time again. It's interesting that Culver has put in a guard. Last time it was Cohen. Now it's Galloway at the foul line. That's a good pass. You see that ball movement? Galloway's going to hand the ball. He looks down, see if anybody's open low. He sees the whole court. Bumbleo committed the personal Galloway stationary there at the high post. Well, I tell you why he fouled Curtis is probably he wanted to foul him because Curtis is a 47% free throw shooter. So that's that's a well scouting job by Newcastle and Coach Cox, and they may put. Uh, Curtis to the free throw line quite often to see if he indeed is a 47 percenter. 19 of 39 from the free throw line this season. He is a 6'4 junior averaging 4.7 a game. 203 left in this one. Only a four point game. No. Bumble the rebounds. Look at him go. To Gillis, double who's teaming. double teamed. No rebound, Craig. And there's a foul on uh, number five. That would be Burris, Blake Burris on the foul. So we're back to the free throw line. And as you so often point out, it often comes down to free throws. Seems to be the, uh, the game plan right now for Coach Cox of Newcastle. He's going to foul Craig. But Craig has made four free throws here in the fourth quarter. And if Curtis gets his hands on it, they're certainly going to foul him. A little short. Free throws, defense, and rebounding. Culver has missed its last two from the line. Five of eight, 62% in the quarter from the line. That's a big one. It's a five-point lead for Culver Academies. Craig has seven in the quarter, 13 in the game. Bumbleo for three. No. Battle for the rebound. He went up and claimed that one. Britton Watts got it and was fouled. Britton Watts has really good vertical. He timed that perfectly. He didn't wait on the ball to play him. He went up and played the basketball. So many rebounders waiting for the ball to come down. He went up and got the basketball. You got to play the ball. When we have seen Newcastle three previous times, as we mentioned, we've seen Britain, we've seen Mason Gillis dominate. Right. Double bonus, by the way, for Britton Watson. He's had a great afternoon. Missed that one. He's also 75%, but now the only ones important of all those he shot this year is this one. <laughs> Two of five from the game, for the game, and Culver Academies has played some good defense today. Got that one. Every free throw is big for uh, Culver. 
He's Bungalow's got 24. Going Bumbleo to the hoop, and he missed it. He did everything but make the basket. Curtis got the rebound. Down court, laying it up and in is Ethan Britton Watts. Out of pass from Trey Galloway. Yeah. Curtis to Galloway to Watts, splendid. At the other That's end, here's ball. a three. It's an air ball by Blake Burris. That's going to stay there. It went off the foot of Culver, but what a great look ahead there by Galloway on that last one. He had a chance to go all the way and lay it in, but his teammate was wide open. He passed ahead to him. Well, timeout is called with 1.15 to go, and Culver Academy's ahead by eight. There are some of their fans. Still a tremendous amount of time left because both teams are in the double bonus. And I think uh, even though he missed the shot, I thought Bumalo did exactly the right thing the last time. He drove hard to the basket, hoping for some contact. He didn't finish, but I think you got to attack him because Newcastle's going to have to get some points with the clock stop. And in the double bonus, there's a good opportunity to do that. On the other end, if I'm Culver, I'm going to be strong with the ball. And I'm only going to shoot free throws and layups. That's it. Nothing from outside, not even a 15-footer. Free throws and layups. Now you got to meet your passes, shorten the passing lanes, and they've been pretty good at that this afternoon. Well said as always. Dave Nicholson inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame in 1999. 16 years head coach at Noblesville. And it's an eight-point game with only a minute 15 to go, Dave. Bumalo comes from a basketball family. He's got a brother, Luke, that's playing at Roosevelt University. He played at Newcastle two or three years ago. Newcastle won a state championship in 3A under Coach Bennett. So uh, this is not a new trip for that school. That was in 2006. And a away. turnover. Now control it. They and they are in the double bonus. And they've got a guy they like to have to line. He started out a little slow with his free throws, but he's hit them, and he also has five points from the field. Trey Galloway missed his first four, has made his last four. And he gets two of them. He's a winning type player. He is. You can just tell that he knows how to play. He's made so many things. If he didn't score a point, he's done so many positive things for his team this afternoon. And this is the biggest lead of the game. Ten points for Culver Academy. Going a little over Gillis. a minute to go. No call there, and Gillis, Gillis inside scores. And immediately, Newcastle calls a timeout. Well, we had a great flow to this game until recently with the fouls, free throws, timeouts, and that sometimes happens at the end of games. Well, you're trying to catch up if you're Newcastle and you're going to do that. You're going to foul people to stop the clock because you've got to have uh, multiple possessions. But I'm telling you now, if Culver makes their free throws, so they're going to win this ballgame. Yes. Uh, because they don't have they're to going to make all of them either. No. Just most of They've them. They've got a little bit of a cushion. Eight points in this game has been a pretty nice cushion, by the way. And the one thing, too, is that they're in the double bonus. So you go to the free throw line, you immediately get two. It's not one and yeah. one. And I would say this about both ball clubs. One of these teams is going to be really sad for a little bit. But both of them are going to look back and feel great about the year they had. And I don't know who's going to win the game yet, but one's going to be really happy and the other one's going to be sad, but not for very long because they both have had excellent seasons. That they have. Culver Academy's coming in 21 and 6. Newcastle under Daniel Cox coming in 27 and 2. Here's Johnny Cohen. Circle the wagons, Johnny. And he's fouled. And uh, probably not a bad guy to put up there. He's a good percentage, 79, but he has not scored this afternoon. <laughs> so this is new territory for him. His job is not to score, it's to deliver the point guard. You don't have to be a big scorer if you're a good point guard and handle the ball and get it the ball where you want it to the person that you want. Bumbleo commits the personal. It is his third. Well, there's no secret. Newcastle's going to give it to Bumbleo, and he's going to bring it hard. And if he's double teamed, he'll kick it to Gillis. A little too strong. Cohen will get one more. We're under a minute, 59 seconds left. The lead is eight. Coach Galloway's 
Just yell, do not foul. Stay between your man and the basket. If they hit a shot, okay, keep the clock going. He made that one. Big free throw for the young man. So it's a nine point lead. He's going to attack. Here's Bumbolo, he'll shoot yep. from anywhere, off the dribble, and he hits it. <laughs> He's kept him in the game. The lead down to six with 50 something? seconds to go. They'll probably foul quickly. Galloway. They got a two on one. Galloway all the way to the hoop. Got hammered. Let's hope he's okay. He yeah, got he's hit a, hard. He, he caught himself. He's okay, but that was a hard foul. You're going to see Galloway. He decided to keep it. He got fouled twice by That's two right. different people. So. And it was not an intent, despite the fact he got hit hard, it was not an intentional foul. It was foul. a play on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And. If you're a Culver, you're happy that Trey Galloway is at the free throw line. We've talked so much about his game, but it's outstanding. You see so why so many schools are taking a look at him. He's going to get stronger. He's already 6'4", and he's a guard. He's a true guard. Seven in the quarter, 13 in the game, averaging 14.8 per game. Now if he makes this, he's at his average. And the way he started, had a one field goal in the first quarter, only two free throws in the second, but he he's has made. been the man here in the fourth quarter. Eight straight free throws he's made. There's Bumbelow. They said don't foul him. They knocked, oh. no, they fouled him. Uh, he usually gets three, that time he's going for two. I would have, uh, coach can't, coach is not out there, I'd let him go. Keep the clock running, he's gonna get points at the free throw line, let him go. Don't foul him. Well, I guess you did. So there is Luke Bumbelow at the line, six foot junior. He is five of five from the line. That's the reason I don't foul him. I keep the clock ticking. Yes. He has 25 in the game, 12 in this quarter, 15 and a half, and 25 overall. There's enough time for Newcastle because it's a six point game now. That's a two possession game. And the clock is stopped right now. Yep. As Dave pointed out, there's a foul immediately. And they fouled Britton Watts, who's a 74% free throw shooter. And the thing about uh, Britton Watts, he's had such a great offensive afternoon, he's got to feel pretty comfortable. Greaser commits the personal, he fouls out. And if Ethan Britton Watts makes one of these two, it'll be a three possession game with under 40 seconds to go. And Blake Burris comes back in replacing Greaser. He had two points and three rebounds. Greaser did in fouling out. It's a big, big free throw. And now Good it touch. is a three possession game and things are looking mighty good for Culver Academies. You say that, you asked uh, Coach Galloway. I didn't say it's over, I said it looks good. 38.9, it seems like a lifetime. It's an eight point game. Big free throws. And Culver Academies calls time. And one of the things that Mark Galloway will be telling his team is don't foul. Don't foul. Yep. Don't foul with 38 seconds to go and you're ahead by eight points. Yeah, you keep the clock running. Uh, you keep, I'd keep one guard back so they can't roll it to 10 second line. Britton Watts coming up and he's had a great afternoon. You're gonna see a variety of things by this young man. A deep three, nothing but net. Little 15 foot jumper off the cut to the lane and a drive pull back, step back, boom, nothing but net again. And that nice little turnaround from the high post area. And there's another three. He has been superior. And I've got him for two, four, six, eight when they count right here in the fourth quarter. He's a terrific player. This is a terrific Culver Academies team. And it's mm -hmm. such a young team, Dave. No seniors in the starters. In fact, I don't even know if they've got a senior on the lineup. I'm looking at my chart. I don't see a senior listed. So the entire squad will be back next year. Right now, they're not really thinking about that. They're thinking about uh, get 38.9 seconds off of there and we'll go down to Banker's Life and next week and play for the state championship. 
So here we go, 38 seconds left. Newcastle ball, Culver Academy's up by eight. There's Mr. Bumble. There's the pressure just to get the clock running. Now you sag the lane, sag the lane. For three. That's short. No. And that's last touch by yeah. Newcastle. Uh, Bumble made a great effort to go get it. Uh, he knew it was off, and he made the effort to go, go get it, and uh, it went off his feet. Here's a senior, Henry Zenner, checking in the game. Okay, I don't... I apologize, he is on my list, and I said they didn't have any seniors. Henry to get in the ball game. That's a nice thing, and kind of a gutsy move right now by Coach Galloway with the game still on the line. And he probably trusts his free throwing and ball, free throw shooting and ball handling. Well, I don't know about his free throw shooting, 39% on oh, my okay. chart. <laughs> but it's good to get him in there as a senior. I'm sure he's worked hard all four years and deserves a, some air time. Here's a whistle before the ball was even inbounded. Now they fouled, unfortunately for uh, Newcastle. Trey Galloway was the one that got fouled. Number four on Nia Williamson. Yeah, no factor at this point with the. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, you know, initially I'm thinking about the game, but then, as right. you said, Zenner's a senior and getting him some time. Right. Culver is 19, Culver Academy's 19 of 30 from the line. Now they're up by eight with only 29 <laughs> seconds to go. Dad had a word for son there at the free throw line. And he listened. Oh, I think he said make it. <laughs> he and was, he did. He was, you know, he's a great free throw shooter and he hadn't knocked him down all the time today. Williamson nope. for three, no, oh, and that'll do it. 32 points. That will do it. They need to blow the whistle. 19 seconds to go. Culver Academies on its way after a seven year absence of going to the state championship game. They won the semi state at Huntington North seven years ago, a game seen on Channel 40. Well, this is Mark Galloway's eighth year up there, and uh, he had to kind of put the program back together. Culver had been really good. Not so good his first two or three years, but he's really put it together, and he owns this team. Deontay Craig makes the first. Culver Academies has scored 27 points in the fourth quarter. And uh, three guys have done their scoring that have done it all year. Britton Watts, Galloway, and Craig, they've been 14-14 uh, and 13 average all year. Cohen got one free throw. Bumbelow firing it cross court. Three by Hardwick, good, but there's only nine seconds to go, and they're down by nine points, uh, or eight points. And they call timeout. Newcastle calls time. As I said earlier, whichever team uh, loses, and that's certainly going to be Newcastle at this point, uh, they will feel badly for about an hour or two, and then they'll think about a 27-3 and three season, and they'll be pretty proud of that for a long, long time. As I said, they set the school record in regular season wins with 22, and uh, they just uh, have had a fantastic year. They, you called, were part of the broadcast team there at the Hall of Fame, they won it. Yes. So that was a big uh, win for them. That is, they've been in the Hall of Fame four or five times, and that's the first time Newcastle had ever won the Hall of Fame tournament. So a lot of firsts for this team. Coach Cox has got to be very proud of his team. 9.6 seconds to go. Culver Academy is leading by eight. And Coach Galloway obviously going to be really happy. He won't even need a truck or a plane or anything to get home. He'll just sail home. I like Mark Galloway. He's a nice, nice guy. And a terrific coach. Got to know him well when he was at Carmel. Speaking of Carmel, they'll be in our second game. Coming up the second game today should be another thriller in my opinion. Got Carmel. the undefeated South Bend Riley and the Carmel Greyhounds. And Johnny Cohen fouled with eight and a half seconds to go. Newcastle foul on Luke Bumbleau. That's his fourth. Shooting two, Johnny Cohen. So Cohen at the line, a 5'9 junior, a 79% free throw shooter. Eight and a half seconds left. This has really dragged on these last couple of minutes. 
with all the stoppages. We're in the basket. He'll get one more. And the main thing for Culver Academies when it gets back on defense is not to foul. Time they get up, all they have to do is step out of bounds and hold the ball. He's short with that. Here's Bumbelow. Let him score. Bumbelow for three, and he, he hits it with two seconds to go, and that is it. Time has expired. Culver Academies going to the state championship game, defeating a terrific Newcastle team. And they will tear down the nets in the final score. Culver Academies 65, Newcastle 60. This is the best choice Fieldhouse semi-state on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. And there's your final on the Indiana Members Credit Union scoreboard. Culver Academy 65, Newcastle 60. And now it's time for our ICJI play of the game. It happened with about a minute 24, and there you see a breakaway pass from Galloway ahead to Ethan Britton Watts for the lay-in. Unofficially, I think he had 28 points in this ballgame. And there's the lay-in, 28 points. What a great afternoon in the semi-state. 10 of 19 shooting, our ICJI play of the game. Once again, the final score, Culver Academy 65, Newcastle 60, the second game. Carmel versus South Bend Riley for Dave Nicholson, Tim Borf, Dave West, Jeff Elliott, the entire TV40 crew. I'm Howard Kelman. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>